What's up, everybody? Toby Beast Guy here, and we are going to be playing WWE Supercard Season 3. Cat Daddy Games was nice enough to fly me out to K Was to Cat Daddy Studios to check out Supercard Season 3. Now, there was no money involved, but they did say, come out, check out the game. We'll let you fly you out. We'll let you play, and you can enjoy the new update and see what it's all about. So I went out there. I got to check out the game, and I got a lot of cool footage. Now, I will say this. The build that I played, we were stressed this wasn't the final build of the game, and we were probably going to get some changes before the game actually launches. So I do have to put that out there. But let's get right into Supercard Season 3. So I'm not going to front with you guys and tell you that I've been the most adamant supercard player of all time i haven't been the most consistent supercard player of all time the biggest thing is that i just stopped playing for a little bit and then i felt that i was so far behind that i couldn't catch up one thing they did add this year is like a mario kart type system so new players have a better chance to catch up with current players which is kind of a little tidbit that i just wanted to throw here at the beginning but now that i got back into supercard season three the most awesome mode that i think is royal rumble mode this is very fun and it is new this time the reason i like royal rumble mode and i also like ranked mode is because it is live play you are playing against somebody as they are playing and the live play adds so much dynamic here if you're unfamiliar with the royal rumble mode it is 15 on 15 card battle and you try to be the last card standing in the match which is very difficult because there's so much that could play into this now, as you play, you get to pick the different match types with speed, power, toughness, or charisma, and they unfold and stuff gets crazy as you play along in this game. So first, I'd like to explain the game mode before we get into the best strategy because I feel that I actually have come up with one of the best strategies to actually help you win in Royal Rumble mode. So first off, when you're starting off, the card type is randomly selected, so you don't know which card type you're going to get. So you kind of want to just pick a random card. It, it, at this point, we're going to say pick any card in your deck right now, just explaining the game mode. After that, whoever wins gets to select the card type for the next match. Now, the thing is, it gets a little tricky here because when you're selecting your card type for the next match, do you want to select one that's going to be a very good card and you're going to waste it just so you can get a, like a toughness if you need a toughness? Or if you need a speed, do you want to waste a really good card on that? Or do you kind of want to lose the match so that you can get a better card in the match later? That's kind of the dilemma we have here. So the way that it's working is it's a back and forth system here with opponents stats going up and down depending on how they play so if i play a toughness card right and i'm in the ring play a toughness card i use it my toughness will go down and then the next match type i have to decide do i want to do toughness do i want to do speed charisma but if i don't have anything but toughness cards i have to use one of those toughness cards so i feel like explaining the game mode is kind of difficult but it's very easy once you play it you just pick your cards they randomly come up, they shuffle through your deck, and then you, if you are in the ring, you get to decide what match type it's going to be. And then as you play, your stats go down until you get thrown out of the ring, or you could last the whole time. It just depends. And then your opponent will actually have to play uh, the same kind of strategy here in a live format, which makes it very fun. So what I wanted to do was kind of give you guys a strategy here because I actually went up to the devs and I talked to a couple of devs and I said, you know what, what is the best strategy when playing Royal Rumble? Do you kind of pick some cards that you want to throw away just because you know that you want to use like a toughness, a speed, a charisma, or a power? And they're saying, well, you do want to make sure that you have speed, power, toughness, and charisma in your deck. You want to have a lot of different variety of cards, but you also want to have really high ranking cards as well so it's kind of a dilemma here what i was told for the best strategy at least what they are playing now in the offices and i will tell you um, that they said this will probably change and people will probably have better strategies than we are giving out here and as it plays you always go to the forums and you see people saying well you should do this or you should do that or you should do this and and i agree because there's a lot of different ways that you could play this game you'll, you'll see people play the game and after i release this video it might actually encourage people to play this way and that you could actually play a different way and it could change things up. So let me tell you what the best strategy that I was given here and we'll go from here. First off, when you get into Royal Rumble mode, you want to pick some of your best cards ever and you also want to make sure that you have variety. You make sure that you have speed, power, toughness, and charisma all in your deck because if you don't, you're going to be screwed if you only have power and then they just keep playing power cards. You're, you're going to get thrown out immediately. Um, but what you want to do is make sure you have a variety there. 
picking when you're picking like your best card I was asking, you know, do you wait till the end to play your best card? Do you, do you, uh, what do you do with your best card? Because there were times when I would wait to play my best card and I was like, okay, if only I could just get thrown out of the ring so I could use my best card. And that wasn't happening. I was staying in the ring. And what was happening was that my best card I had to actually use and just burn it as a as a toughness, a speed, a power, or like a card type, right? So when you're in the ring and you're you're holding the ring, you have to use your your cards kind of as like burner cards. You like burn your card so that you can do the match type. And I actually had like a really high ranking AJ Styles, but I could never get him into play because I was waiting and waiting, and waiting to get thrown out of the ring. I never got thrown out, and then. Um, I had to burn AJ Styles by the time I burned him they were able to come back and beat me because I had burned that AJ Styles So the strategy that I have heard from them and what they usually do is they usually play their very best card First the very best card that they have in their deck first And the reason they do that is because they want to win some of those early matches to get on the board If you can get some early wins right away, then you have a chance to dominate this match That is what I've been told now, I went by the strategy that, well, what if I let them use their best card and then I save it till the end or the middle and then I can make a huge comeback? It didn't seem to work the best for me when I did it that way. The reason being is because, like I said, I was in the ring so much dominating and then I lost my best card by using him as a card type. It really comes down to a back and forth type strategy because if you're in the ring too long you're gonna burn through some of the cards that you don't want to burn through because maybe you want to use them later on in the game now the thing is that you're not always gonna have a chance to pick the best card that you want because these cards do get pulled randomly so you're kind of screwed and and I found myself if I stayed in the ring too long then I had to burn some cards that I didn't want to burn maybe I wanted to use them later on in the game because again, this is using toughness, speed, charisma, and power, and you have to burn a card to use one of those stats. Say I, I have a card that has a toughness, but I really want to use him later on. I might not play him when I should play him to stay in the ring. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I want to lose and get out of the ring so that I can play a card later on. Again, this is a very different type of game mode that we're used to playing because you are burning cards to try and get those stats. And it's tough when you try to save a card all the way to the end, but then you never really get to play it because you're in the ring too long. And then when they come back, they have so many good cards left and you don't because you burned them all, you're kind of screwed. So the strategy I would say the best strategy and I talked about a little bit earlier is to try and get points on the board early by playing your best card first. Again, this is a randomly generated card type at the start of the game. So neither you nor your opponent know what the card type is going to be. So if you have a really good, like well-balanced card that has a lot of toughness, a lot of speed, power and charisma, all, all those card types are pretty much the same. If you have high stats, play that card first. Hope that you can win, and then when you win, you get to pick the, the uh, card type for going forward. Again, it's kind of tough if you want to stay in the ring the whole time if you have a really good card, but I think the best alternative is to win a couple early matches and then lose on purpose so you can sub out that card and then get a better card in there. Um, that's kind of the idea that we're going to go for in this strategy. I know that it's probably going to change as you play and there's probably going to be different strategies and people on the forums are going to talk about it and I'm probably going to get hate for this because Tony beats guy doesn't play super card all the time. But I spoke to the devs. I talked to them. I sat down and I said, what is the best strategy for Royal Rumble? And they laid it out. Win early. Get some points on the board and then try and survive later on because uh, Again, it's a very back and forth type system here that we're not used to seeing where like you have to choose. Do I burn this card or do I risk like not being able to play him later on? You, you know, it's, it's very difficult because like, again, I was playing against, I think it was Luigi and she probably has a video on her channel, but we were playing. I was like, okay, I'm going to save this really good AJ Styles card that I have till the end of the deck. And I was waiting and I was waiting and I was waiting, but I couldn't. I had to burn him. I had to use his card type. I, I believe it was like a toughness or maybe it was a speed. I can't remember at this point, uh, but I had to burn him and it wasn't something that I wanted to do, but I had to use him because I had to pick the card type. And then when I used him, I never really got to play him in the ring. So I got screwed and then she ended up coming back and winning. So it's a very tough choice here, but I would say 
my suggestion is to play your best card first the best card that you have first and try and get a win early on and stay in that ring as long as possible and then maybe go for your like uh, you you, you want to save your best second best third best but that's not always going to happen so it's, it's a very back and forth strategy here but i will say first off use your very best card right away just to see what can happen Anyway, guys, Royal Rumble is a lot of fun, and it might sound confusing right now, me trying to explain what Royal Rumble is, but when you play it and when you see it played out, you will understand it is very awesome and very great, because I, I like the 15 on 15 card type. This is probably going to be my favorite card type, uh, match type to play is the Royal Rumble, just because there's so much variety. It's like a mid game mode, so you can play for a little bit, but it's not as long as like King of the Rings, so you can actually... Uh, just bust through it in like you know a little bit maybe like 10 minutes not even but just playing is very fun and uh, I think that you guys are gonna really really enjoy this and especially with the live play it just makes it so much more fun anyway guys let me know what you think in the comment section below are you excited for Supercard season 3 let me know and hit that like button if you enjoy this we'll be back with more WWE Supercard